Um, sorry, if you can just enable screen sharing, I'm unable to share my screen at this moment. All right, um, you can go ahead and try it again, it has been enabled. All right. Um, okay, hi everyone, good evening. Um, okay, please, I need to, this is going to be like an interactive class. I need you all to actually speak so I know that I'm speaking to people. Good evening, Ma. Hi, good evening. No, oh, my name is Shale. <laughs> Please, let's just call Michelle. Okay, so I think it's two minutes past eight. So I'm just going to start just a quick run through of who I am. So my name is Shea Momotoshaw. I am presently the product manager, product owner for a financial inclusion product in Interswitch. Um, I have about three years experience working as a product manager and my journey to product management started at this company called Content Garage. Um, so basically, Content Garage is a, um, like the name implies, it's a company where we, what we did was that we produced digital content for um, companies that do not have the ability to create those content. And it's very funny how my product management journey started there because we did not have any kind of interaction with software building. However, we had a, um, we had a job where we're supposed to interview some founders and that was when my interest picked and then I started researching about how I fit in the ecosystem and then I found out that all the skills that I had were transferable into product management. Okay, so there's a session I like to call something new where I like to learn something new. It doesn't have to be about your job, just something very exciting, something that is mind blowing. So I'm just going to call that random and please indulge me. So Fatima, tell me something that you learned recently, not about your job, um, not so, something educational probably or something fun that you just learned recently. Okay, so just to break the ice, I can tell you something I learned recently that was really fascinating when I found out. So I found out that um, there are two types of stones. So you know the way they have <coughs> um, natural precious stones like diamond, rubies, um, and the rest My name of is gemstone. Oh, <laughs> great. So you know how they have like, um, gemstones right I found out that um, so because of the demand for gemstones they had to start creating gemstones in the lab so like a diamond for example might take you years before it hardens and become that shiny rock however they would just take components of those things that would make up like a gemstone and then they would make like a lab grown gemstone which would take lesser time and cost less money when you're buying it so if anyone wants to share anything that is interesting. So I really found it interesting because, it, I mean, every single thing in this world apparently can be replicated. So anyone wants to share any interesting thing that they've learned recently? Doesn't have to be about your job, please. Gemstone, thank you. Oh, yeah, tell me any interesting thing. To be honest, it doesn't have to be very big, just small. Anything? Um. I don't know. Okay. Apparently, I learned something new okay. from um during a competition, right? Um, okay. I learned, it's about corruption, actually, trying to solve the right. problem of corruption in Nigeria. And um, okay. somebody suggested that um one of the ways they can solve we can solve the problem of corruption in Nigeria is by putting people out there. And she gave it a name that is actually very special. But okay. I can't I can't remember the exact word she used and it was actually making sense and everybody like agreed to our point. So okay. yeah. All right, thanks. So um how we solve corruption is by put, putting people out there. Is that what you said? 
yeah people that like commit the crimes then you could drag them like um, i think it's a shame pain something okay. i don't know how she it. called it so like they would not have to do that same problem again like commit that same crime again because some people are actually very ashamed when you yeah. drag them for doing something wrong right yeah. so with that like we we'll try to reduce the rate of corruption in nigeria yeah. okay i i i somewhat agree thank you so much um i don't know if anyone has any other thing to say or to tell me i love to learn new things so if none i would like to move on okay so basically at the end of this lesson there are some things that i would want you to have learned and um, some of them are like i want you to understand the importance of products the key concepts around product management I want you to understand the importance of product management in the software development life cycle. I want you to know when to leverage agile and scrum and practices in a product life cycle. Then I would also want you to be able to know what to measure, how to measure. And then I would like you to also know some of the best practices because I don't think that we can ever list all the best practices, but some best practices for product managers and product management. Okay, so first, Zoom is not the tool that I use, so pardon me. So basically, this is the what, why, who of product management. Um, and I would like us to answer the great question of what is a product or what are products, right? So before we heard about product management, we had an idea of what products were. We had seen products in, um, so people that have like an idea of um, what do you call this, um, FMCGs, for example. FMCGs also call their goods products as well to say, oh, I have laundry detergents and then they'll list out all the product names, quantity, SQL and all of them. So um, products are basically articles or substance that are manufactured, refined for sale. So for something to be called a product, you have to either want to sell it or give it out to people for people to use. You do not have a product that you just want to put in your shelf in your house. That is a decoration. Or you do not have a product where you want to, um, I don't even know, but products at the end of the day are supposed to be manufactured, created, whatever, and they are supposed to be out for sale. The people are supposed to be using it for it to be called a product. So some examples of products are like magazines, toothpaste, candy, laundry, detergent. Sorry, is someone trying to get my attention? Yeah, and the rest of them. So anything that you can think of that you've gone to the market to go and buy or you've gone online to go and buy products. And then um, because of the digital age, things have now been moved from, oh, um, I'm no longer selling like a physical product. I can have like a digital product. And what are digital products? They are basically just intangible assets or piece of media that exist in their digital form and can be sold, distributed repeatedly online without the need to replenish inventory. So if you have um, an online store and you're selling hair, that is just a product, it's not a digital product. However, if you have a product um, if you have um, like an ebook, for example, and you keep, um, you do not have to replenish that ebook. There's nothing about sold out. If you go to Amazon, for example, or you're using Kindle, there's nothing about sold out on a Kindle book as long as you're using it on Kindle. However, if you go to Amazon and you want to buy a book, you would be able to see that, oh, these things are sold out. So that's the difference between a digital product and a physical product. Um, digital products are intangible and you do not have to replenish them. However, physical products, even if you tend to use digital stores to sell it, you would have to replace them. So just a quick exercise. Um, I would like to hear examples of digital products. I've already mentioned ebook, so please don't say ebook. So every other person except James Stone, unmute your mic and tell me examples of digital products. Online courses. And I just said ebook now. Online courses. I didn't say ebook. Hey, um, no, but what's the difference? They are ebook no, online they're online. No, they are online. Okay, courses. okay, I agree. I agree. I agree. It's okay. It's okay. I agree. I agree. Sorry. <laughs> no I think you said that was what somebody else says. Say, uh, me too. <laughs> it's okay. So, next person, that was Adibola. So, next person. I uh, know that was 
Adebola Deyinka, so that Kazim will not say I called his name. So Kazim, you can go next. So just quickly, to be honest, there's Audio no wrong books. answer. Th Audio books. Thank you very much. I see what people are doing. It's okay. All the derivative <laughs> of ebooks is fine. Give me. Um, okay. Printables. Yes. Yeah. So when you mean printable, when you say printables, what do you mean by that? Because if you're going to print it, I would assume that is not a oh, are you talking about like scan copy when someone wants to print something or if you send something to someone and they have to print it? Well, I agree, even though it's not a product that you sell for money, it but it is also something that is digital. So I'm fine with that. Okay, Michael, yeah. the two Michael, like John Michael. Michael. And, oh. oh, yes, yes, true. Okay, um, is this Nemo? Nemo, was that you that gave me that feedback about print tables? No. No, it's Fatima. Oh, okay. oh Fatima. I actually wanted to say digital learning platforms. <laughs> is <laughs> Is okay, thank you guys. I also don't think you should limit yourself to ebooks, digital learning platforms. Think about all the things that you use, all the apps that you use, those are products as well. So, you use your uh, let me sell my products. You use Quickdela, for example, <laughs> and you to send money that's a product, right? You use a um, Quickdela business to sign up that's a product we don't necessarily have to but thank you so much everyone okay so i assume that we now understand what the difference between like physical tangible products and digital intangible products um so you see this thing when people ask me has anyone watched this movie Anyways, so when people ask me, what is product management? What I think about is everything, everywhere, all at once. That's it. Product management is everything, everywhere, all at once. And I tell people that if you do not take time to actually plan out yourself as a product manager, you find out that you have done a lot of things. And at the end of the day, you have achieved nothing. So this is product manager management. Let me even go to the last, to the second slide now. So this is a perfect description of who a product manager is and what product management is, where you have communication, you have hard work, you have multitasker, you have someone that has infinite patience, you have someone that is curious, someone that is strategic, and someone that knows how to make decisions. And then you, all these things is what you want to have as a product manager. And to be like a successful product manager, you have to be a, a mix of all the things to be successful. So this is what product management literally is, where you have to be able to make decisions, you have to be able to prioritize, you have to be able to be strategic, you have to be able to work in an agile team, you have to be able to know the languages that your um, your developers are using. You have to know when to deploy products. You have to know, see, seasons of the ESF because it's in terms of deployment, when you're trying to deploy products, right? You do not just deploy and say, oh, it's morning, my product is done. You also have to plan to say, okay, if I deploy this product today, is it actually going to be used? And then is this the right time? Has the market moved on? All those things in one. So product management is not a faint-hearted job, but it is a very fulfilling job, I have to confess. Okay, so to the question, what is product management and who is a product manager? So basically, product management is the business process of planning, developing, launching, and managing a product or service. It includes the entire life cycle of a product from ideation to development to go to market. Product managers are responsible for ensuring that the product meets the needs of its target market and contributes to the business strategy while managing a product or products at all stages of the product life cycle. So product management, as we always used to see, is the, in the middle when it comes to design, business, sales, and all that, right? You, your job as a product manager is to understand what your customers need. Whatever they say that they, a, 
they want. Like the whole saying about if a, if was his name asked, I think his name, it was Ford, asked if um, his customers were they wanted and they said they wanted faster horses. Um, he would have gone to do faster horses. However, I say that's correct because your customers are going to just tell you their needs. I'm going to tell you how he's paining me. I'm not going to give you a solution for me. However, your work as a product manager is to say that, yes, I understand that this is your pain point. My job now is to ensure that I am able to translate that pain point into working solution. And so let's use the car, for example. They're saying, oh God, I want to be able to go to Abuja in two hours, unlike horses that I go to um, Abuja, I'm using three days. By the time I go there, the person I'm going to see has already passed the wheel, something like that. As a product manager, I'm the one to say that, okay, I understand that this is a problem. So you want to go faster, that is your problem. How then, working with the engineers, how then can we ensure that this thing that is a problem, there's a solution for it? So product management is in the middle of that, where we are working with the developers, speaking to our customers, speaking to customer support, marketing, you're doing research, you're planning, you're with the development team, understanding what kind of development they are doing, understanding how the system, the architecture works as well to say that, okay, based on this, is this going to be the best experience for my customers? I know that you're trying to solve your, their problem. If you solve their problem and you do, you use one billion steps to solve their problem, are you actually solving the problem? So that's where product management is. And then product managers are basically the ones that ensure that those things are executed. You're overseeing your product, you're monitoring your product, you're building your, the strategy of the product, and you're looking at your product in all, at all stages from the, oh, this is an idea. Is this going to be a viable idea? Oh, this is being developed. Oh, this is being launched. Okay, I start monitoring now to say, where's the traction? Where, what are the things that we've been able to do um, so far? How many customers have we been able to onboard? How many um, transactions have they done? Where have they dropped off and all that? So that is what product management is. And I did, a, I put a little thing here to um, speak on the important attributes of product managers. You need to be a leader. So. And when you talk about leadership, you are supposed to be able to, to lead with, to make, to influence, yes, to lead with influence. So in the sense that you do not have authority, you, there's no one that reports to you, maybe except you're like a senior product manager or you are the head of product and then you have product managers that report to you. However, the people that are actually going to do the work do not report to you. The engineers that are going to build that product do not report to you. However, you, want, you should be able to have some sort of influence on them to let them know that um, there's urgency in what we are trying to do. And then um, there's an important, like it, this is important. You have to lead with influence. And the only way that you can lead with influence is if you know what you're doing and then you're a great communicator, then you have to be someone that executes. It's not about talking, being in the meeting for three hours and you're talking. You are the one that when people are having lofty dreams and you know, Meetings are the places where people like to show that they have um, agility. So they are talking about all the things that they've thought about in this life. Oh, why don't we just, like when they press one button, why don't we just call their grandparents um, this thing? And then you you are the one that is ensuring that those things are actually being executed. You're writing them out because you know that after that meeting, everybody would forget everything that they've said. You, are, you have to be strategic. So you are seeing two, three, five, 10 steps ahead to say that where we are now, this thing that we are doing, how does it connect to the goal? Our North Star, you are the person as the product manager. You have to be strategic. You also have to have impact, right? This is the whole leading with influence <clears throat> or um, motivating without influence, however they call it, where you have to be able to, because of the things that you know, your, your um, track record, you come with data, the information that you know, how much you know your customers. You're able to tell people that, see, this is it. I know what I'm talking about. You also have to have customer insights. It's very, very important as a product manager to be very customer centric. 
you are not as much as you um, are aligned with the business goals and with the goal of the company you also have to be customer centric you're not building at the end of the day if you do not build something that your your, your customers want you're not making money and a product that does not make money or a product that is not adding value is not going to make money and a product that does not make money is going to eventually be scrapped you have to have vision you have to be a great communicator you have to be a great planner you have to have you have to be able to collaborate so you know when you are a naturally a moody person you're not really a oh i want to be with people you have to actually drop that down and say when it's time to do the work you have to be able to collaborate reach out to people nobody's going to kill you set calendar invites for people and call them on the call and have conversations with them and then you also have to take ownership this is your product when your product is failing it is yours for product managers when the product is failing they will ask you at Uluwashion, transactions are not going but when the product is they will say oh dear engineering team we just want to tell you that our um, customers are happy they were doing this but you have to take ownership that's your product you have to take it ensure that your product is actually going because at the end of the day it is about what you're able to do um i don't know if anyone has any questions oh well let's just leave questions to the end so why are products built right so first and foremost and the most important reason why products are built is to add value to the customers. If your product does not have value, think about a product that does not have value. Um, the customers are not going to use it. So it's just funny that in, um, in Nigeria, there are a lot of products that people don't actually pay for it before they use it, right? A lot of our products are free. However, in countries where their sign up is not free, people have to pay for it So, like, um, I mean, almost everyone uses like free Zoom, for example. So in, in companies where they are using um, premium Zoom, they are paying for Zoom. If the product is not a great product, you would get something else. Uh, uh, an example is basically Jira. I am not convinced that Jira is a great product personally. And every time I see an alternative, I am willing to use an alternative over Jira. But the great thing that Jira has is that um, the, there's a value that Jira has or is giving. So Jira being able to, or having confluence and being able to, when it comes to like worksheets, for example, when it comes to like having timesheets, Jira, when you create something on Jira, you can link it to the timesheets and then that will record for the time that you've used. So that's value that Jira is giving, even though I don't think that Jira is a great product. So those are the kind of things that I can't do on Miro, even though I love Miro and I like using Miro because it's seamless. But if a product is not adding value, it will not be used. So think about any product that is not adding value and is making money. I don't think there's any product like that. Anyway, so the most important reason why we build products is because we want to be able to add value to the customers. If there's already a product that is adding value, when you come to the market and you're trying to um, dominate the market, you would come to fix whatever issues that the previous product um, um, had and they've not yet fixed. And then of late, I, what I've been seeing is just price wars, right? Where everyone is giving you the same products but reducing price and saying, okay, since our um, disposable income is not a lot, people would, um, price point is very important for them. So, but at the end of the day, you need to be able to add value. Then for the why products management, right? Product management basically is the thing that takes you, that makes you understand <clears throat> what you're building am I building the right thing? And translating it into ensuring that the um, product is built right, basically. So you take, oh, am I building the right thing? Are we building the right thing? That's where you start. Who are my demography? Who are my ta target audience? Where are they? Let me speak to them. Guys, what is your pain point? And then you're getting that feedback and you're saying that, okay, um, this is your pain points. And then you're translating it to the engineers that are going to build to say that. I've already told you that the pain point is that they want faster cars. However, there's a way that they want to experience, sorry, faster horses. There's a way they want to experience these faster horses. So in when people are telling you, oh, my pain point is, or oh, I want faster horses, they would also talk about all the 
um, accept the faster the um, speed of the horse. They will also talk about those experienced things to say, oh, if I don't have a saddle now, I'm not able to ride this horse. I have to hold the um, horse's mane. It's not, I have to remove the, um, the shoes every three days. All those things are, those are the experience problem that they will tell you and then when you're translating it to the engineers you're not just telling them the requirements in terms of um give them faster horses you're telling them in terms of the experience as well to say that aside the fact that they want faster horses these are other things that would make the um, experience um the experience great and then when the engineers are building, they're also coming to validate with you now to ensure that they're actually building the product right because they don't want to get to the end of the product and then realize that, ah, sorry, I did not say that you should put the hair on the back of the horse. I told you that you should put it on the side so that I'll be able to hold it very well. So that's basically why product management is there so that you're able to identify the right thing to build and ensure that it is being built right. Um, so now for building um, software products, right, they have been two main ways in which or frameworks in which um, products, remember when I spoke about product managers having every skill, as a product manager as well, you also have to have product management skills, you should be able to uh, manage a product manage the development life cycle of a product it's in big organizations you have the opportunity to have a program manager or a scrum master or a project manager however in small companies you do not have the ability to be able to divide them as a product manager you'll be the product owner you'll be the project manager you'll be the um, in fact you do analytics you'll be the product marketing manager you would everything you'll be everything so it's important to <clears throat> harness those skills, know how to um, manage projects, know what the frameworks manage projects are. So for product management, um, for um, software development, <clears throat> there has been like two main ways in which um, projects have been managed. They have been water, they, there is waterfall and then there's agile. So basically waterfall was about um, building a product so I would use um, I would use a car for example. Okay, so I would use hardware products for example. So when you're building a hardware product, right, there is no iteration for the hardware product. At every point where you're trying to iterate for that product, you're bringing out the new version. So if we talk about Toyota cars now, um, I, I'm not very great with like cars like that i know their names but i don't know the models to say oh one was in 2013 and one was in 2014 however i'm just going to um speedball here so if you're talking about toyota for example you're talking about corolla and um you buy a 2013 corolla and something new comes out or um the toyota team are saying that oh we can see that why don't we just give them alloy rims for example they are not going to upgrade your car to say that, oh, I've pushed an update to all the cars. Now you would have alloy rims. No, they would build a new product and they would put it out there and say, this is 2014. And they would list out all the benefits of this new product to say, oh, alloy rims. You would have that video, this thing in your car that when you're trying to park, you can see it. You would have whatever, whatever. Right. So waterfall was the method in which they used to do all this, where you need to have clear requirements from end to beginning of that product that you're trying to build. There is no iteration on that particular product or that particular version that you're trying to build. <clears throat> you're building it. You know that the start date for this product that you're building is 1st of January 2022 and your end date is 31st December 2023. Those are your product, um, your project timeline and you have to meet your project timeline because at the end of this particular, um, you need to launch your product. <clears throat> so that was basically what Waterfall or that's what basic what waterfall is, where you need to know the end of the beginning from the beginning of that project. You need to know <clears throat> there's no um coming for feedback all this oh product management um are we building it right there, nothing like that there's no coming to meet you to validate that oh um is this how they want it oh 
um, test drive it if it's not good let's send it back inside and try to upgrade it there's nothing you're building the product you're already giving them all the specifications how everything how we want everything to be built they're writing out the project timelines they're giving the teams that need to do those work and they're shipping that product when that product is done so if you notice that whenever there is a product where whenever there is a product that specifically cars that they have issues there's is always a recall to say guys 2017 model for honda has is is default please send it back to the this thing and we would give you a new car with software products right and using agile we do not have to tell you to send back the product to us we would find that pro, um that problem roll back and start rebuilding that thing and then roll it and then deploy and then you see the updates at the point where you're doing where you're using that product so the difference between agile and waterfall is while um, um waterfall doesn't have, really have feedback loop once it has gotten to the customers it has gotten to the customers we will take feedback but the feedback we're going to take is because we want to use it for the next version agile is different agile has a feedback loop you would always we want continuous feedback from the customers, we want continuous feedback from um, our marketing team, we want continuous feedback so that we can improve that product that is already in your hand. Now, Scrum is basically just the methodology under Agile. So Agile is the grand framework, then there are other things like Scrum, and then the one that I, I presently practice, which is SAFE, that has scaled Agile, basically being able to do work in, um, I am um, in, in time frames of three months so you plan for the next three months and say for the next three months these are the things that i want to build and these are the things that i want to release so agile gives you the opportunity to have continuous release continuous iteration continuous deployment um so this is just like a um, difference between agile and um what do you call it and waterfall so there are things about timeline client involvement flexibility and budget so with agile you're able to be flexible with your budget because agile gives you the opportunity to have like an mvp minimum viable product i give you a i'm trying to do like a uh, what app am i trying to do maybe i'm trying to do like a reading app and i know that what is going to be the minimum viable products for this particular app the product where i know that if i give it to my customers they can do everything and every other thing is just an add-on what what's what is it that my customers want to do with a reading app oh they want to be able to search for the books that they want they want to be able to um find those books <laughs> and if they don't find those books they want to be able to see like a notification to say oh you don't have that book this book is not available i'll notify you when this book comes they want to be able to read bookmark where they are reading and then they want to be able to either give a review minimum viable products i create that ship it to my customers and then I'm able to be like in terms of um, what they call it, <clears throat> the budget in terms of flexibility, my customers can use it when I put them like in a pilot, they can use it and say, mm, this bookmark, whenever I bookmark it, it makes my screen blank. So I'm not even able to read it. I'm, I'm saying, okay, that's fine. Thank you very much for this feedback. I'm going, I'm fixing it, giving it back to them and say, tell me feedback. Agile helps you do that. Um, waterfall doesn't help you do that. You're not involving clients. You're not involving the customers in the period where you're building. You're just taking, um, you're, in fact, you're taking feedback or you're taking your um, requirements from who your product sponsor is. Oh, my CEO is my product sponsor. He says he wants the cars to open like this. I'm doing it like that and I'm shipping it out. Whenever my customers give me feedback, I'm taking it to the next car. Or I decide that, oh, you know what? I'm not going to continue Toyota Corolla again. I'm just going to go to um and what they call it about four and i've dropped it i've gone to another one so that's these are some of the difference between um waterfall and agile <clears throat> so disadvantages of waterfall without even speaking of it i've spoken about the fact that you're not able to so unless you have clear requirements you're not able to move forward so there's no flexibility you're in terms of the budget that you're using you have a fixed budget i mean you start to panic if you're running out of but if you're running out of money and you've not reached like half of the project um what else is 
I mean, advantages, quite simple to manage, to be very honest. You already know what you are building. So nobody is going to come and confuse you to say that, oh, let it be S shape and let it curve or something. You already know that, oh, people have done their designs. You already know that this door is going to be like this. Nobody's going to tell you that, oh, in addition to that, I also want to press. Mm -mm. You already know what you are building. Um, the model is easy and simple to understand and to utilize. In this model, phases are prepared and completed one at a time. Phases do not overlap. So I'm not having like three scrum teams or three, ad, um, what do you call it? Three art sinks. I mean, three art teams where they're building three different things and at the end of the day, they have to converge. I already know that first person, you have to do the doors. Thank you very much, you've done the doors. I'm putting the doors on the car. Thank you very much, you've put it. Okay, I'm driving the car out the, in one line. You do your own, you pass it to me, I do my own, I pass it to the other person and the rest, simple. Um, so the disadvantage, not efficient, not an efficient model for object-oriented and complex projects. So if your project is complex, you cannot use a um, waterfall. You just have like a linear, simple project, um, high amount of uncertainty and risk. So in a situation where you don't know what the feedback from the few, from the customers are going to be, to be honest, you are just going with blind faith that they would buy your car because you are Mercedes. You've been selling cars for 50 billion years. You don't really on, have like, you're not sure that they would buy it. You just use your last year sales, last year sales to say, oh yes, they bought 1 billion cars last year and nine, this year they'll buy 2 billion. So it's uncertain. Anyways, so with that, I would like to know what, from all the things I've said, I want you to give me three um, advantages of agile framework and three disadvantages. So I'm going to be calling people. Uh, yes, Abadje, Abdu, Kudus, please. One advantage of um, Agile Framework, so of all the things I've just said, what do you think is an advantage of using Agile and what is the disadvantage of using Agile? I can't see myself again. All right. So Kudus, hey, hey. okay, I thought you dropped off. Don't be afraid, just tell me. Ajayi Yanulua. Okay. Advantage, disadvantage. So anyone that has like any feedback at this point, just okay. what do you think is an advantage? Uh, Thanks, Chica. Uh, can I say something? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. I think one of the advantages of a uh, Ajay is that you 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 get to get a uh, constant feedback on your program. Right? Yes. Very true. very true. Very, very true. Is there a disadvantage that you can think of? I don't know. Let me just say that one disadvantage that uh, you get to set your engineers and designers. Sorry, I didn't hear that. You get to do what? You get to stress your engineers and designers. Yeah, yeah. So I think another disadvantage is the fact that because there is a feedback loop, there is always room for distraction. So um unlike um waterfall where you already know what you're building, you're just going to build it because there's a feedback loop with um agile, there's room for distraction, there's room to say that okay. Um, let's say you're building a bottle, for example, and you've already said that for that bottle, you want the um, cap to be silver. And then you show your customers and your customer is already telling you that, oh, sorry, the market has already moved on. This other person, they already giving us something that has like strap that I'll hang my water bottle on my, on my neck or I'll hang it on my shoulders like handbag. I can even, so because of that, because of the feedback loop, there's room for distraction. So that's why as a product manager, you also need to be able to know how to filter what is just Customers would always want a lot of things, but you have to know how to filter it. So that's one disadvantage of um, of using Agile. I mean, there are other disadvantages like because of the way, I mean, Agile is basically, you can use it for complex projects, right? There would be a lot of projects that are in flight, a lot of projects that are working 
that uh, you're building when sometimes you need to be streamlined to say that, okay, let's finish this thing. Let's give it out. Let's know what we are doing. But with Agile, you have a lot of projects that are still going. And then sometimes <laughs> projects, no, they finish you. The projects will never finish. You shall just be adding and be adding. You never get to a point where you're saying that thing has gotten to like maturity stage. So that's another disadvantage of um, Agile. Thank you very much, Chika. I don't know if anyone has any other feedback. If not, I would like to move to the next slide. Right. Um, okay, so uh, where's my? So there's a saying that goes that if you do not measure something, see that my this thing has even. Oh yeah, that's it. So there's a saying that goes that what you do not measure, you do not improve. So let's say that you are a product manager or you want to even start your journey into product management, for example, and you are just like, okay, I'm just going to be a product manager. If, you're, if you do not have goals, if you do not have like, um, what they call them, if you do not have, um, if you do not have goals or um, what they call it, um, milestones that you need to measure, you would not know where you have, how you have become or what you have become. So what you do not measure, you do not improve. You do not know, you wouldn't know where you have. Um, dropped off, you will not know where you have become better. You would not know. You will not know anything. You just be living your life, and at the end of the day, you you'd have spent like 10, 20 years doing one particular thing, and you find out that I've not really achieved anything. So it's very important, and also really in product management, they um we also use a concept called time boxes because we tend to be in a lot of meetings, people would always drag you. So if you do not have time boxes to say, okay, for I'm going to use 15 minutes. Um, I have 15 minutes free now to do whatever anybody wants me to do. You will just continue being in meetings the whole of your day. And you find out that you have no idea what your product is doing. You don't, you will not do anything. So it's also important to even beyond your products, you as a product manager, the things that you do daily, you need to be able to measure and monitor. So these are some of the ways in which you can measure. Yes. Uh, apologies. For some reason, because of this thing above, I'm not really seeing. I'm trying to reduce it. Because I can't see, I, I, I can't find a way to reduce it. Okay. So these are some of the things that you measure in your products, right? So this is, um, know that this is not the do all and end all for measurements, right? There are things that, there are some things that, there are some um, things, there are some products that you would never get to measure any of these things. And there are some products that, oh, you would measure this. So for example, traffic that's paid or organic, you already know that if it's a website, you have to measure the traffic that comes to your website. And then you need to know why that traffic, so if it spikes for some reason, you need to know why that thing spiked. I want to give you one very inside this thing. Um, so there was this particular product that um, for some reason, I mean, there, there, there's a threshold. So you do like a maximum of, your customers do like a maximum of 5,000 transactions in a day, for example. And then for some reason, one day you see that these people are doing 20K transactions. It should raise an alarm. And the only reason why you would know that that is an anomaly is because you measure your product. You know that, oh, on a daily basis, um, because at peak period, we do maybe 7K. If it's not peak period, we, we do 5K. Weekends, Sundays, public holidays, we do like maybe 10K. But then one day you have 20K. First thing you need to go and check is why. Why do you have a spike? Are you doing a promo? <laughs> is, your, is your transaction, um, what they call it, are you losing money? Because I know that customers, once you hear, you know those things that they'll tell you that dial star something, 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 you get free MTN and everybody wants to go and dial it. I'm sure MTN will just be looking at this and say, oh yes, they started again. Mm -hmm. Please turn it off. They should know already because if you have like, like an increase in transaction is almost mostly because especially if there are transactions that they pay for, it's almost like you need to actually be a lot. And the only way you'll be able to know all these things is if you're able to measure your product. Bounce rates, retention rates, your customers. 
how many of your customers were onboarded and how many of your customers have stayed in that period that you are trying to um you're you're measuring for your churn rate how many of your customers have dropped off why are they dropping off number of sessions per user so there's some there are a lot of so this is not like the end all for measuring products however there are some things that might be very very um that might there are some things that might cut across like churn rates for example even on a website you also want to know why you would have like active users you also want to know why if for some reason users are not active you want to know why those users are not active is it that your um your content is in as engaging or your content was being advertised so if you do ads were they being advertised under the wrong um ad this thing maybe you used some keywords like um you use keywords like maybe money for example and that person is looking for how to make money and then yours come up meanwhile your own is that you want people to be able to save or something and it's not related to whatever they want to do so you also need to understand all this and if you're able to measure adequately measure well you'll be able to know where your product is how your product is doing how your product is doing as the points where you become the product manager for that product and how your product is doing at the time where you either want to leave or at the at every time that you're trying to measure it so it's very important for us to measure our products um so for the last slide yep that's the last slide for me and it is um oh, i can't even see the top of this so this is basically the <sighs> excuse me sorry how do i on okay so this is basically this is basically about the um oh my god sorry i'm struggling to see my screen anyways i'll manage it so this is basically about the best practices for product managers and product management so like i said the list is actually very exhaustive, but these are the ones that I would say are dear to me in terms of practicing product management, right? So the first one is understanding your company's goal and how your product fits in that goal. So you would not, especially for products that are, um, especially for products that you're building from the scratch, right? What is the company's goal? Or in fact, if every product, to be very honest, because at the point where you come to, you inherit a product that has already been built and you find out that your product is doing a certain thing, you, but you also want to be sure that, excuse me, that you're not building features, you're not building um, extra add-ons that do not align with what the company's goal is or does not align with the vision of your own product. So your product is maybe to be the financial um, provider, financial service provider for all Africans, for example. And then you're building a future that you can do um, one thing that does not involve Africans, for example. You should be able to understand your product's goals, what the company goes as well, or the business goals, and ensure that the product that you're building also aligns with it. Um, so in addition to, okay, so you need to be able to read, you need to write and then you need to repeat. Another thing I should have added here is you also need to listen and not just listen in terms of like, oh, you want to listen to your customers. You need to be able to listen to what other product managers are doing. Um, so read and writing is great for communicating. The best way to be a great writer is to continue to write. The best way to have a reading habit is to continue to read. And the best way to communicate is if you are able to read deep wide and if you're able to write deep and wide as well you should also be able to listen to one of my guilty pleasure is that i am a fanatic for podcasts i love podcasts very well both the ones that are product managers the ones that are about um, um north korea being a i beg before they <laughs> they come and hack my account i beg anyways the one about north korea leading the hacking of this world and stealing all the money i'm a i'm an advocate for listening to podcasts because i feel like it's very very easy very easy 
doesn't take anything from you. You're doing whatever you're doing and you're listening to something that is very important. You're listening to something that would um that would teach you something new. However, listening to podcasts does not increase or does not make you a better writer or a better reader. It just makes you a, it just makes you learn something new. So I would always recommend that you read books, read about um, people that, um, what they do, um, what they do this, people that analyze products, read about how they have analyzed the product. What are they looking at? Write about, analyze your own products to write about it. Write about your experience being a product manager. Do not, all this, once you work with engineers, you will just know that engineers hate writing emails. Don't answer them. Even if you're going to have a meeting and talk to them about it, write those emails, put down your thoughts in those emails, give it to the engineers. If they, you can then have your, phone conversation then use your product you cannot be a product manager and then your customers are complaining about something and you don't have that first-hand experience not possible always use your product um, and then use other people's products you, your product is not just the only product that is there use other people's products even products that are not like your competitors use your other people's products when they're telling you that there's a new social media app out there onboard yourself there What's the experience? You will learn something from it. Oh, there's a new, uh, I don't think that there's any products in this life that I've heard of that I've not tried to sign up on just to see what's the experience because you get knowledge from all those things. Which other day I was thinking about how to enhance my products to, um, what do you call it? For people to be able to escalate issues from their POS terminals. And what did I go to do? I went to InDriver and I said, oh, how does InDriver even escalate issues? Let me even see. I went to a um, money point. Go use people's products. There are, I know that you are great product managers. However, there are people that have more, that probably have more experience building products than you do. So use their products, read what they have written then talk to your customer. You cannot be a, a product manager without being customer centric. Speak to your customers. You and your customers are supposed to be like this. You're supposed to have like one customer on speed there that if people in everywhere they're complaining about, oh, once that's the customer you call and say, mm, are you experiencing the same thing? And he says, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you've already validated it. You just want to be sure that, oh, it's not the network situation or it's not the per area situation. Speak to your customers. You need to plan, execute, and iterate. You cannot continue to speak about stuff. You need to plan it. You need to execute, and then you need to iterate. Once you build, take feedback, iterate. You also need to monitor, uh, monitor and measure. Like I said, what you do not monitor, what you do not measure, you cannot improve. So continue to monitor and measure. And then the last thing for me is that you need to keep an eye on your competitors. What are your competitors doing? Sometimes, sometimes. Use your, like, not, like, I'm all for minding your business, but no, 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 no. For product management, mind your competitor's business. All the things they're complaining about. So the issues that, so for example, there was, I don't know if anyone heard it, that MTN had one issue that people, like one money issue that they took like maybe 6 billion from them or something like that. One very massive amount of money. See, when you see something like that as a product manager, the next thing that you're supposed to do is to go and, go and test your, your products, go and start pressing your product and say, what are the loopholes that people would use to, to take from us that will lose money? Look at what your competitors are doing. The problems your competitors have, the things that customers are complaining about, go to your competitors wherever they upload their app and go and be reading all the comments to say, oh, three star, oh, five star, oh, one star. These people, they took my money, they did not. Go and look at it. Do your own and say, how can I make my own better? And then when you make your own better, tell your customers. So that's all for me. We have about six minutes. Do we have any questions? Oh. Right, guys, this is where you ask me questions, so unless I've been talking to myself, and I want to believe I've not been talking to myself, so please go ahead with your questions. Should I call names? Mustafa Abdul Assis. All right. Hmm. 
Victoria Johnson, your name looks very suspicious. Do I know you? Yeah, hello, Shewa. I don't know if you can hear me. Sorry. Yes, I can hear so you. So you can check through the chats, please. Thank you. Oh, okay, great. Oh, okay, so let me just start from Miriam. Thank you, my explanations are quite simple to understand. Oh, thanks, great. Are Scrum Masters the same as Product Managers? Nope, Scrum Masters are not the same as Product Managers. So Scrum Masters in the grand scheme of things are, um, so there are servant leaders, let me just use English. There are servant leaders that oversee the work that the engineers do. So in a in waterfall, it's put project management. Yes, I think even in in agile, it is either a program manager or a scrum master. So the scrum master is like the grandmaster that understands all the agile methodologies, that knows how to be like knows how to use scrum, knows how to be a safe. Um, ninja and is guiding the engineers to say oh guys we have daily stand-ups you're supposed to come for daily, daily stand-ups we have iteration meetings you're supposed to come for iteration meetings we have um, refinements we have retrospective we have all this and all that so those are who scrum masters are product managers on it on another hand totally different the product manager is the one that ensures that whatever your customer has Whatever your customer, sorry, has said, you're interpreting it in a way that the engineers are understanding. You're carrying your customer support team, you're carrying your sales team along, carrying marketing and the rest. So they are not the same. Um, how do we ask our customers questions when we do not know them? So the first thing about product management is before you start building stuff is to know your customers. So that's where your customer persona comes out, comes in where you're identifying what your target market is, your target audience, customer segment, the industry that they are in, and then you're also identifying like their personas to say, and most times, your pe the personas are not exactly like you cannot do a persona of me and like and identifying me as Sheo now. Your persona would be slightly like me. So Sheo, a a Nigerian woman that lives in Lagos, for example, that can be anybody. But then when you're identifying the pain points, because we share, we have shared pain points, it can also be anybody. So you have to first identify who your customers are. So you can't um, ask people that you don't know questions, identify who they are and where they are. So I understand that a lot of times when we are trying to identify our customer audience, when we have identified them and we've done, done their persona, we don't know how to approach them. It's simple. How think about who their personas are and how best it would be to approach them. Is, are they technically savvy? Are, are they um, technology people that, oh, they're always on the newest app, for example, or they're always reading the news, what, however, or are they people that they would rather you walk up to them and strike a conversation? So that is how you're going to meet them. You're not telling market woman, somebody that is, as in she's trying to sell all the goods in her market, you will not send her a WhatsApp message and tell her that she should feel one survey form. She's not going to answer you. So for a customer like that, that you've identified that, oh, my customers are in Balogo market, so you have to walk up to them, sit down with them, observe them, and then ask them the questions that you want to ask. I hope I've been able to answer you, Fatima. Um, okay, that was Emmanuel. So Agile is mainly used for software development. Yes, yeah, so I am... I, I would say that Agile is mostly used for software development. And in, I mean, yes, software development, I've seen people in um, Volkswagen, people in, um, what's the name of that other car? I can't remember, that also use Agile because if you recall, they also do electrical cars and they have, like cars now have advanced to the point where we have to do software in cars. So yes, mostly for software development. Great presentation. Thanks for making it relatable. Oh, thank you very much, Lillian. That is my um, superpower. I like to, it's, I don't know. Thank you. I think that, um, so I, just, oof, I don't know. I think that's all. I think the last one, I don't know if there's any other question that I would have missed. Please just draw my attention to it. Or oh, are the messages to my personnel? Okay. 
All right, Thank that's you. all. Hi, Shun. Oh, I don't think you missed any questions. Yeah, all right. Okay. Hey, thank you so much for giving me this time to express myself. I I enjoyed it. I hope you all enjoyed it too. Yes, we did. Thank you so much. Your presentation was clear and very easy to understand. You're welcome. Thank you for making our time to be here tonight. So thank you for a great session. So guys, if you have any questions to ask you, kindly go ahead. If I don't get any questions within the next two minutes, we can call it a night. So you have till, okay, two more minutes. So that by 9.04, if we don't get any questions, you can call it a night. And also I'll be dropping Shion's LinkedIn handle. So do well to connect to her on LinkedIn. All right, so Damola is saying, thank you so much. I enjoyed your session. Thank you so much, Damola. <laughs> All right, but if guys. we're not talking, no, me, I like interactive class. If we're not talking so much, and I don't want 